Do, do. Let's see. Hi, Dr. Robin McKay here. Welcome to this week's weather report. This is my gift to the members of the Actualization Zone, which is my free Facebook group. If you're not a member of that yet and you're catching this on YouTube, head on over to Facebook and type into your search bar Actualization Zone. It'll come right up. So, and I look forward to seeing you over there. If you are joining me live, be sure to say hello in the comments so that I can say hi back. And unless you are logged into StreamYard, I may not be able to see your name. So just be sure to put your first name as well so I can say hello to you. If you are watching the recording or the replay, say hello as well, because I always pop back in and and um, say hi to you as well. So I was just so excited to get on this, this session with you all today. I spent the weekend in Sedona with my husband, we hiked, we had a lot of kind of magical experiences, including this one. I think I'm going to write about it at some point, but we went to our, the subway cave, which is our favorite hike in Boynton Canyon. And Boynton Canyon is thought to be the birthplace of humanity by the native people who have lived there for generations. And um, as I was sitting in the, um, as I was sitting in the subway cave, a woman looked at me and she said, oh my God, you look so familiar to me. And, you know, I'm, I've been in the media a long time. I have social media that I am involved with and have been for a long time. And I said, well, you know, I'm an executive coach. Maybe you saw me on Instagram or something like that. She said, no, I remember you. She said, you're Robin, aren't you? She said, you were the, my, the psychologist at ASU Polytechnic Campus while I was there. This was, you, you guys, it was like 12 years ago that I was there. And she told me that I had at one point guided a future perfect day meditation for a group of people. And she had been there and she said, and you want to know something? She said, it came true. I wanted to tell you that the vision that I had for myself all of those years ago came true. And I had chills all over my, my whole body. It was pretty cool to, to, to meet her again, to see how she had grown and changed and evolved over the past years that I hadn't seen her. And then most importantly, it was so cool to hear that her vision came to life. And that's something that we work on in the actualization zone quite a bit. In fact, that's central to actualizing your greatest hopes, dreams, your heart's desires, is to be able to hold the vision for your life, for, for your heart's desires, even when outward appearances would suggest that it may not be happening. It may not be coming to true, true fruition, which is what I want to start with today on the weather report. This is just me tuning into the non-physical influences, my intuition, my spidey sense to see what's up for us in our community of intelligent, intuitive people who are really pursuing the creation of a new world for ourselves and other people. So let's just dive into that and see what we have in store. And I, there's a Facebook user on that says, hi, Robin. I think I know who that is. But I, again, I don't see your, your names. They don't show up on uh, StreamYard. So if you want to tell me who you are so I can say hi, that's awesome. If not, hello. So glad you're here. Okay, so ready? The overriding theme this week is wait. Just wait. And it's Holly who's the Facebook user. So hello, Holly. And the message to you and to everybody is wait. Now, let me be clear here. I don't mean twiddle your thumbs and I don't mean, you know, sit and watch hours and hours of, of Netflix or anything like that. But what, when we're asked to wait, a lot of times it comes because there are things that are forming. There are parts that are moving that are outside of our perception and outside of our control, actually. It's as though the universal manager is moving furniture in order to get everything in the right place so that whatever it is that you're desiring for yourself, for your family, for your life can just drop in. But at this point, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes that you may or may not be aware of. 
So in the waiting, there are always things that we can do. One of the things that you want to just check in with yourself on, I know that when I'm asked to wait, I feel like I'm a racehorse chomping at the bit, ready to get into the race, ready to go, 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 go. And yet when the message is wait, hold, just a second, just a second, just hold and breathe. It's an opportunity to do something different other than press because intellectually, you know that you can make things happen. You always have been able to make things happen. But in the stepping into an actual an actualized life, the life where you are living the highest version of yourself in your highest potential, it's an invitation to let go of the old ways of doing, of muscling your way through, of gritting your way through, of hard working your way through, and just wait. It's a little like this. If you've ever baked a cake, you get all the ingredients out on the counter, you mix up the dry ingredients, you mix up the wet ingredients, you mix the two together, you at some point are preheating the oven. At some point you pour the batter into the cake pan and then you put the cake pan in the oven. And then you wait and you let the oven, you let the heat do its work. And my sense of it for, for us this week and for the coming weeks actually is that there's a lot of cake baking going on, but the, the period of cake baking you're in at this moment is waiting, waiting for the oven to do its work. Now that's to say that you've preheated the oven. That's to say that the oven's already on, it's already hot and ready to go. So when you're working on an actualization or a creation or a, a goal that's near and dear to your heart, really paying attention to where am I in the process? And if I've put all the ingredients together, I've mixed everything up, I've put the batter in the, in the cake pan and the cake pan and the cake is now in the oven, there is nothing to do but wait. You can clean up the kitchen. You can go play with your kids. You could go read or write, imagine, create. You could do a whole lot of things while the oven is doing its work. So that's the message around waiting. It's not that your creation isn't in progress. It's just that those external circumstances are doing their work now. The oven is doing its work in other words. So here are some other things that you can do while you're waiting. One of the things, one of the questions I want you to ask is how can I even more fully commit to living my best life? Now, I'm not talking about living a perfect life. I'm not talking about living an Instagrammable life or a TikTokable life or whatever those the kids are calling it these days. But just asking yourself, how can I more fully commit to the life that I'm living right now? I'll give you an example. Last night when we arrived back from Sedona, we were I was unpacking the car. Michael had taken Cooper out for a walk. And I looked in our garage and our garage has, we're big Christmas people. My husband loves to decorate for Christmas. So we've got a lot of Christmas in our garage that's stored. And not all of it has been fully put away. We just moved re recently. So it's a little bit like things are just where they are. And in the past, whenever I would go into the garage, I would kind of roll my eyes and go, oh, I need to get out here and organize this stuff. Oh, it's kind of that energy of wishing things that could, could be different and recognizing that they're not different. And then pointing the finger back at me and saying, if I would do something different, this garage could look different than it does. But last night when I was unpacking and I was walking back and forth between the trunk of the car and the house through the garage, I just had this sense of just like, okay, we'll just, be with what is right now. Love what is right now. Change your perspective on what is right now. Stop wanting to have things be different from how they are just in this moment. Get some acceptance about it. And by the way, acceptance doesn't mean that you're tolerating anything. It just means that this is how things are right now. Love your life. Love the life you're in. The mistake that we make when we make a decision to love the life that we're in 
if we're not careful, is that we think that if I accept, if I love the life that I'm in, then nothing else is coming, that I won't be stuck here forever. But that's actually not even the case. What's the case is when you actually fully drop into and commit to the life you're living right now, right now, messiness, dogs barking, kids crying, partner in a crunchy mood, whatever it is, when you fully commit to that from a conscious perspective, the world opens up because the world can no longer fit all of who you are because you've expanded so much. You've accepted so much. There's that old saying, what you resist persists. And I like to think about that when you're, when I'm resisting, like, oh, I hate how my garage looks right now. Ooh, I'm resisting that. But when I get into acceptance about it, I can appreciate it for what it is. We love Christmas. We've got a lot of Christmas stuff. Okay, so just ask yourself, how can I more fully commit to the life I'm in right now? And expand yourself, expand your consciousness all the way to the edges of your life. Because it's at that point that the universe has to expand to fit the bigness of who you are. The second question you can ask during this period of waiting is how can I hold my vision? Even if it appears nothing is happening, how can I hold my vision? What's the best way for me to hold my vision? Remember, my dad always says, whoever carries a vision leads the way. And it's very important as you are beginning to actualize the life that you truly want, that vision that you truly have, you, ha I'm going to say have to, and I don't mean have to like should, but it is a good practice to hold the vision, to carry the vision for what you're desiring to create, even if your physical reality is not reflecting that vision yet. So just ask, how can I hold the vision? How can I carry this vision? How can I enliven this vision? How can I look for clues or cues from my reality that my vision is dropping in? And that's a really interesting question to ask, isn't it? Because I think one of the greatest disappointments of intuitive visionary people is that we can see very clearly in our minds how, how we want things to be when our eyes are closed. When we open our eyes and we look around and we're like, oof, oof, it's not quite there yet. It's not there at all. It's a little bit like going back and checking, is the cake done yet, even though you just put it in the oven? And maybe, oh, by the way, you haven't even turned on the oven yet. So if you keep checking and the cake's not done, it could be a matter of time. It could be a matter of turning on the oven as well. But the way you turn on the oven or turn up the heat on your vision is to hold it, to talk about it, to get excited about it, to be in curiosity about it and wonder what's the end better? What's possible here? In the universe of anything is possible. What, what is possible for me? What's the best version of my future? Not the perfect vision. What's the best vision? What's the highest timeline for me, for my family? So when you're feeling discouraged, that things aren't cooking as fast as you would like them to, when you feel discouraged that things aren't moving as quickly as you would like them to, spend some more time with your vision. Go back into your desires. Rearrange them. Move them around a little bit. See what else gets stirred up as a result of that. That's an actual doing activity. Even though if somebody were looking at you using your imagination, they would think that you are doing nothing when there's a whole lot going on internally. All right. So ask yourself, how can I keep holding the vision? So two things. How can I commit to being more fully in my life? And how can I hold my vision even more powerfully, even more confidently? 
And then the last thing is this, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And I think that at this point, it's important to also take a look at where am I not feeling my best physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually? Where do I need some healing? And use this time, use the time that the cake is in the oven to heal. Use this time that the cake is in the oven to meditate, to talk to your coach, to talk to your therapist, to do some inner work, to bring yourself into your healthiest and most well, so that the actualization of your heart's desires can actually can come to you and that it comes so much easier when you're feeling your best. But if you're feeling crummy, if you're feeling anxious, if you're feeling crunchy, irritated, frustrated, whatever it is, it doesn't mean that your stuff isn't on its way. It's not like Santa Claus. Oh, you better be good or else. Or you better only be happy or else this stuff isn't coming. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying actually lean into those emotions that you're having right now. Fully commit to those as well. Not in a destructive way, but in a curious way in a way that makes you wonder about them, to be curious about what, what you're feeling, what the origin or the source is. And you might even find when you do that, that a, a large majority of what you're feeling isn't even yours. Because remember, intuitive, intelligent people often will take on other people's textures, emotions, attitudes. So use this time of waiting to just get clear within yourself, to lean into those emotions, not to make them go away. I remember I had somebody tell me once, I wish, can you just take away my emotions? I said, it's not like an appendix. Your emotions aren't an appendix that you can just cut out, but you can transform them. But do so for the sake of transformation, not for the sake of outcome or results. Does this make sense? In other words, if you're transforming your emotions because you think you're going to get something on the other side, like Santa Claus would bring you a present if you're a good girl, then you're going to be disappointed because that's not how actualization works. It's not about good girl, bad girl. It's not about being happy all the time. It's about being real. It's about being human. It's about feeling your feelings, taking responsibility for your emotions, having compassion for yourself, having compassion for others. That's the heart. That's the heart of the actualization process. The side effect of it is actually the, the result. The thing that you really want coming into, coming into your reality. But the process is feel your feelings without judgment, with an open heart. Be curious about them. And use this time of waiting. You can see how you're not really waiting, are you? It's more like you're preparing for what's next. And so with that, I'm going to go ahead and close out our weather report for today. I am excited to announce that the McKay Academy of Actualization is coming soon. We're going to be opening the doors for applications to our first cohort. If you want to get on the wait list, which is basically an early notification list to know when all of that comes out, you can go to drrobinmckay.com forward slash wait list and get on that wait list. And as I mentioned in the beginning, find me on Facebook in the actualization zone. Just type actualization zone into the search bar. It'll take you right over to the Facebook group. Until next time, I'm Dr. Robin McKay. Big love and I will see you next week.